for years. Uh, I've been playing guitar since I was 14, so that's about 23 years, and God, I'm getting old. Um, I always use passive pickups, and I don't know if that was just because I was, well, when I was younger, I just had this, like, thought that, like, all the active pickups sounded the same, because at the time, everything was a Les Paul or a Paul Reed Smith single cut with active pickups in Mesa Boogie dual and triple rectifier amps. Everything sounded the fucking same. Creed, Godsmack, Seven Dust, a lot of them had that very similar guitar tones, and it was, it was just kind of oversaturated. Uh, how many people were using the, that particular gear, not the, not the tone. And I kind of made a very conscious, uh, in my young and, uh, non-conformative mindset at the time, was that I wasn't going to use that, I, I wasn't going to use active pickups, even though I used a Les Paul and a uh, single cut Fernandez, but I wasn't going to use that stuff because I didn't want to sound like those bands. And, you know, the real irony was a lot of my favorite bands, like Metallica and Cannibal Corpse and Machine Head, used EMGs. So, up until last year, it was all passive pickups, and I made do, but I kind of made a conscious decision last year, 2019, that I was going to build around my playing. Because when I was younger, I did a lot of tone chasing. And, uh, you know, no matter what I played through, I noticed that certain things always crept through, uh, whether it be through an orange or a black star or a Marshall or a PV. There was just certain elements of my playing style. As I got older and wiser, I realized it was down to how I hit the strings with the pick, how I held the pick, my finger tone, things like that. So in 2019, I made the conscious decision that I was going to give some EMGs a try. Um, I went with the headset first because anybody that knows me knows that James Hetfield is probably, without a doubt, my favorite guitar player. I'm a rhythm guy. I like riffs. I'm not really a shredder. Not even a good soloist, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> I guess maybe even my riff writing can be questionable at times, but, um, that was going to be my starting point, because it wasn't the EMG 8160 set. It was, as Hetfield had said in the EMG video, it was kind of geared to be like a passive pickup that was active. So I'm like, you know what, that's a, that's a good starting point. It, maybe it'll respond like a passive pickup, but it'll have that active oomph, like he claims it does. So I ordered a set, and they came in, and I put them in a Jazz Master, and I was fucking floored. It was basically what I was looking for. And it complemented my playing just right. So I was going to probably stop there, but then my son has, he plays on a travel league for hockey, and we were a little south of where we live, and we had a day to kill, so we went to the mall and some other stuff before and after his game, and we stopped in the Guitar Center, and there was this cheap single cut, uh, I didn't even know of the brand at the time, it was a SX Les Paul copy type of guitar. Cheap as hell, it was like 175 bucks or something like that. It had an EMG 81 and an 85 in it, and I was like, fuck. I'm, fuck. <laughs> you know, that's, you, those two pickups alone are more than that sometimes, and depending on when you buy them used or new. So I was like, I'll buy it, and then I'll just swap the electronics out and sell the guitar. So that's what I did. So then I was up to two sets. And then uh, I heard about the retroactive pickups, and I was like, hmm. So my curiosity was picked there. Jim Root had supposedly said he used the Super 77s to track All Out Life. So I was like, oh, well... The guitar tone sounds pretty good on that track, and, you know, I, not everything I play is in drop B, but some of the stuff I play is in drop B, so I was like, well, I'll try the Super 77s and see what those are like. So I got a set of those, and I put them in a Stratocaster, and the Super 77s are very nice for me. Uh, they act like a passive but they have an active circuit, so you get that consistency, but you also get that it responds to your picking. Like, 
and little nuances in your playing, and I really liked how they sounded with that, that guitar. So I did some recording with them, and uh, I thought maybe they were a little muddy at times, but it turns out that was just me and my amp settings, and once I used them on some other stuff and tried some different settings and some different amps, then they really popped, and I was like, holy fuck, these sound awesome. So that was it for a while. That was my my three sets of EMGs. I did buy the Squire Contemporary Jazz Master with the actives in it, so I had four guitars with active pickups, and they all suited very specific things that I wanted them to. Well, then I got to the point where I thought about trying out Fisherman Fluence pickups um, and possibly Seymour Duncan Blackouts, but I never... I never got around to it, mainly because I ran out of money, uh, <laughs> and I had some other things going on. But uh, this year, as uh, things started slowing down on some of my expenses, I was like, all right, you know, let me get a couple more sets just to see. And I wrestled really hard with the Fishman set and the 5766 set that EMG makes because... I wanted something that I could do the heavy stuff that I could play metal on, but I wanted the option to be able to have that single coil clean tone without having a single coil in there. And I don't do a lot of coil splitting. I have pickups, passive pickups that are capable of, capable of being coil split, but I don't. I never wired them up and did anything with that. <coughs> So, I was leaning real heavily towards the Fishman set because it gave me the option of having that humbucker metal tone and then being able to have that single coil sound depending on what I picked. I was potentially thinking about the Devin Townsend set. And then I stumbled across the, the Gary Holt EMG set, which is a 81 in the bridge and an 89R in the neck, which is the 89 has your humbucker, but then, with your push-pull pot, you can pop it, and then you have a single coil. The R has the single coil closer to the neck, so it's reversed from the regular 89. And price-wise, the, the Holt set was a little cheaper. Uh, it looked a little cooler because it was red. And uh, I really kind of only wanted the, that option for the neck pickup, so I was like, okay... Because my other option was the uh, 5766 and getting the 66 TW. But even that was pretty expensive. So I, I went with the Holt set. And because they were red, I knew exactly what guitar I was going to put them in. So they showed up. I'm going to tell you right now, if you put them fucking things in a Strat, have a router handy because that push-pull pot will not fit. <laughs> so I had to route out the body a little bit or the control cavity a little bit, lower the the wood a little bit to get that pot to fit. Luckily I had the, the EMG three-way selector switch so I didn't have to use the preamp. And then for on strats I just put the batteries in the uh, back plate because most of my strats the trims are uh, pulled down on the body. And there was a lot of uh, trial and error there to get all that shit to fit in that guitar, but I got it to fit, and it worked, and it was awesome. I mean, the 81 sounds like, I don't think Holt really did anything to his set other than you get the option to get him with uh, either black with red EMG logos or red with the gold EMG logos. Either way, the red looked cool. Uh, but the 81 sounds like an 81, but the 89R is where it shined, and that was exactly what I was looking for. I could have that fat humbucker sound for uh, distorted leads or something, but I could pop that push-pull and get that nice single coil tone for cleans and stuff like that. And it really worked out how I wanted it to. And then Reverb has become, or Reverb.com, not like actual Reverb, has probably become the bane of my existence because I spend way too much time on there and drool over things that I really shouldn't be buying. 
So I was looking, and I didn't have that classic 8160 set. I seen a set, it was the Metalworks, the Brush Chrome. They were on, they were used. They were a decent price. I ordered those, and then I ordered a set of uh, the, the 5766 set, which that by far might be my favorite of the EMG pickups because it's that, it's the closest you're going to get to an active PAF pickup. They, I mean, that's basically what they sound like. They're that classic old Gibson PAF sound just with the active circuit and they're fucking phenomenal. Uh, I did get the Jim Root set because I liked the retroactives and his set is basically what the 8160 is just in the retroactive setup. And uh, so far everything's worked out pretty much how I wanted it to and I don't see any reason to switch now I do still like good passive pickups my goal was to get big tones out of not a lot of money um, mainly because you know I'm a blue collar working guy um, I got kids I got financial responsibilities I can't put a $200 set of pickups in every guitar that I have um, but I, I, through kit building and stuff like that I realized very quickly that the stuff that comes with the kit doesn't sound good. So I tried to find reasonable alternatives. Um, I went through some pickups from a company on uh, Amazon called Music Lily. I had decent results for them. from them. They have a uh, zebra colored bridge, open bobbin bridge pickup that uh, sounds really good for very little price. And their humbuckers don't sound too bad. Probably the best ones I found were the, <clears throat> I wanted gold humbuckers one time, and I bought some from Seismic Audio that sounded fucking great. Uh, I stuck them in a green Les Paul copy, actually it looks more like an ESP Eclipse, because it's got the sharp horn. Um, I stuck them in there, and they sounded really good, and I stuck them in a, the SX Les Paul that had the EMGs in it. I put those, uh, the Seismic Audio pickups in that too. and. Um, the friend of mine that bought that guitar, he even said that those pickups are nuts. But uh, I wanted something that just that was a little bit better than that. And I'd been I'd seen Guitar Max's videos on Dragonfire pickups, and I almost pulled the trigger on those a couple times when I finally decided I had two Squire Telecasters that I did not like the pickups in, and then I'd have flying V that I built that it just wasn't quite getting what I wanted out of it. So I, I was looking at the Dragonfire pickups and uh, I ordered the Screamers, the Crusaders, and the Guardians. And I put those in the two tellies and the flying V. And every set of those sounded good. The Screamers are like a modern metal pickup, uh, high output ceramic magnet the I'm gonna get the names fucked up the Crusaders are like a Seymour Duncan and they look exactly like a Seymour Duncan invader they have a little bit more color options to them I stuck those in the flying V and actually it sounds a lot like what I remember my old Seymour Duncan invader and my Les Paul sounding like and then the Guardians are like a more vintagey I'll Nico pickup that have they're good for rock and you can even use them for metal but they're a little bit warmer than the screamers and I was really impressed um, each set was the prices varied but each set was sub sixty dollars um, so then I went with a few more sets I got another set of screamers for a strat that I was working on and uh, I got the seven string screamers for my Squire Stage Master 7, which I forgot to mention, I'd ordered EMGs, they were the soap bar pickups, did not fit in the guitar. It's the body mounted style, it doesn't have the pickup rings or anything, and them fuckers would not go in. And I didn't want to reroute the body to accommodate them. So I ordered these, because I figured, well, they'll fit. And the pickup backing plate did not fit. It was not the same. So I was like, Fuck. So I had to take the backing plate off of those, 
swap them with the backing plate on the stock pickups. And I finally got the sons of bitches in. It was worth it, though, because they sounded really good. Um, but there's something about a passive pickup that I still really enjoy. You know, um, I like having the diversity and the options. I, basically, I've tailored my gear to fit any situation that I can think of. And there's just certain things that there's times where I'm looking for kind of a more passive sound, and there's times where I want that high output, active pickup sound. And <clears throat> it's not always exclusive to metal, but there's just certain... Now that I know enough about what works with what, I know what guitars, what pickups, what amps I want to combine to achieve a certain thing. And I kind of have my little pre-baked ideas, like, um, you know, ironically with amps, uh, an amp that I've never used that is on the Line 6 Helix actually works really well with uh, two of my Squires. The one is the one that I custom painted and everything that has the Dragon Fires, and the other one has really good stock Squire pickups that sound fucking amazing. And it's uh, the Rev Generator that's on the Helix sounds really good with those two guitars. And like my Drop B guitars have a nice... They work very well with a 5150 preset that I came up with. That Ironically, I've never really been able to sound good with a 5150, but for some reason these two guitars and that, that preset that I came up with, or that patch that I came up with, they work really well together. Some of the stuff, like my writing is kind of all over the place because I listen to a bunch of different things. So when I write stuff that's not like... When I want punch and clarity and the song is generally fast, then I, I'll use active pickups just because you get that... I feel like I get better individual note clarity out of those. Whereas if I'm writing something that's a little bit more heavy rock or like has an opethy feel I gravitate back towards the passive pickups and that's what's great about the the two the three Epiphone Les Pauls I have now is I got the one with the 5766 and then I got two with the Epiphone pickups and those Pro Buckers sound amazing and the one with the Pro Buckers you know it's nice for that like I said the opethy type stuff but if I want to do like a thrash metal song then I'll use the custom with the 5766 set. And it all boils down to just having that nice palette of colors to work with. And I think that's probably... I'm probably a bad example because I have a lot of guitars, but everybody should have at least a Les Paul and a Stratocaster, I think. Um, because those are your two basic sounds that's been my goal for probably the last year and a half is just to be able to cover all of my bases and approach any given musical situation that I may dream up or maybe encounter if like I said if I end up in a band and those Dragonfire pickups have worked really well because they're affordable and I mean for the price of one set of Seymour Duncans I got enough sets to put in five guitars yeah five guitars that now sound great now, obviously, if you have a guitar that has Seymour Duncans or something like that in there, you probably don't want to rip those out and throw Dragonfire pickups in. But, I mean, for what they are and for what I was looking for, they worked out astonishingly well, to the point where I'll probably end up those other guitars that have the pickups that I got off of Amazon and other places... Um, I'll probably pull those and put the dragon fires in. Any purchases I make from here on out are just going to be like bucket list items like an explorer. I've always wanted an explorer.